Hi, I'm Pepper Corey, and I'm from Studio E Fabrics. And one of my passions is sashiko. And sashiko is a Japanese form of hand quilting, and it started as a very modest craft. It started as darning, and it was hundreds of years old. Uh, it, classically, it's done in a white thread on a blue background, so we can always start there. This is a stencil with three different sashiko designs in it. Um, this is a pine tree silhouette, plum blossom, and that is Asanoa, which is a flax leaf depiction, but to us it looks like a star. Um, in order to do sashiko, you have to somehow mark your design on your fabric. And I've chosen the peppered cotton that's called Ink, and it's a medium royal blue that is cross-woven with black. And in order to make it a little stiffer so that the embroidery will lay right on it, I have taken the fabric and onto the back of it I've pressed a really lightweight interfacing. And this is uh, always follow the directions on your particular brand of interfacing when you want to do this. So now I know that this area in here has a little more body to it. And I'm going to lay down the stencil and I'm going to mark the design. And the white pencil that I'm using is by Roxanne, Quilter's Choice by Roxanne. These come in either white or silver. And so let's uh, get that design on there and then I'll show you about the stitching. I have marked this design, which is called the Pine Tree Silhouette, and it is symbolic of uh, strength and endurance. After I marked uh, the stencil, you can see in the stencil that there's little gaps. These are called legs on the stencil. I went back with this ruler and reconnected the lines. I threaded up my nice, long, sturdy needle, which comes out of this pack of Sashiko needles by the Colonial Needle Company. And I'm using a number eight white pearl cotton. Always works, and you can find number eight pearl all over the place. There is an, an original Japanese thread, but it's much harder to source in this country. So what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to start by stitching right about here and go down here and you zigzag back, see? And then go here, there's a zag, and here, kind of like a little teepee. I will put the needle completely underneath at this point and make it come up here. And that's called traveling. And I'll continue stitching all the way across, again, traveling underneath like this, and then finish a whole half of the design in one pass of stitching. I can always tell a person who hasn't handled a needle by hand because they take a thread this long. In hand sewing, your, your thread should be about from your fingers up just past your elbow, but no longer than that. The idea here is that you should never have to engage the shoulder when you stitch. So I'm going to start stitching and uh, Sashiko is crunched up in your hand. It's not like Western embroidery that uses a hoop. So I can take this piece of fabric and just crunch it up like that and I can start stitching and I'm holding the needle sort of horizontally like this. And just ahead of the needle is the thumb of my opposing hand. And I'm going to lay in a stitch that's about a quarter of an inch long and then take a gap that's about an eighth. Quarter of an inch, gap, an eighth. Quarter of an inch, gap, an eighth. See how the stitches are building on the needle? Every place that the steel is showing, that's going to make a stitch. So you take several stitches at a time. Pull it all through. And you can even crunch it up like that because you can then take it and smooth it. 